Hey everyone, how is it going? It's great to see everyone. We got Fahim in the chat, Aiden in the chat, uh, 20, 30 people on, which is awesome. Good to see you, Aiden. Thanks for being a member and a subscriber as well to the channel. Let me turn this down in your headphones a little bit right here. There we go, perfect. Oh, I'm super excited. We got lots of stuff happening in the office, uh, which is rad, some remodeling. Uh, we weren't here last week. Of course, you know, I moved to YouTube, so I didn't have to stream every single week anyways. Um, but everyone's healthy. Everyone's good. Software CDN is in the house. Good to see you. Um, you know, I should also make Aiden a, a mod as well. Let's do that. There you go. Cool. Just in case we get any things going on. Kevin, good to see you as well. Thanks to all of our brand new members um, that have been joining up over the last two weeks. Super appreciate it. I started kind of promoting it finally inside of uh, some of the videos, which is good. Uh, and then I'm going to do an exclusive member stream in February as well. That is my plan. But thanks to Henrik, Will, Lloyd, Illa, and Alexander in the last two weeks joining up. Super appreciate that. And for all of our members as well, which is great. Are we ever going to see you play that pinball machine? Oh, the pachinko machine? Uh, <laughs> probably. It works. It works 100%. Yeah, I can put a ball in. Hold on. Here you go. Uh, all these balls are these little metal balls. So if you're in Japan and all these are pachinko machines, and this is a 1969, um, I forget, Nakas, Naka, Nakasan, I think. Uh, I forget what it is, but it's like Partridge is the one. But yeah, you basically just put it in a little hole. I got it. There you go. Did it. <laughs> Software. There you go. Uh, so the the goal of this is to obviously get it into any of the little little um, cups, and then you win additional balls, and you would cash those out. Basically, uh, that's that's a rare occurrence that we saw there because me and my wife were playing the other night as we were redoing some of the office, and we played for like five minutes and didn't get a single one, <laughs> which is funny. So and then there's a little lever in this little thing here, which basically gives you twenty. Uh, 20 new balls that go down into the bottom down over here by my Microsoft plaque um, And then that thing it probably needs some WD-40. It's a it just it doesn't go there. But yeah, there you go Took me a while to actually figure that all out Let's answer some questions in the chat in the chat in the chat this morning uh, You know we had someone ask uh, I think pre chat it probably is not here anymore a uh, hint software was asking about shell with blazer um, I don't think you need like shell. I mean, shell wouldn't be a concept of blazer, but if you're doing like .NET Maui plus blazer, you could use shell and .NET and blazer together, right? You would just load each page basically as well. So you would, um, for each of your pages, those pages would just have blazer, um, items inside of it. In fact, um, the podcast application, which I'm going to be updating today as well over here um let me go ahead and go over to my computer computer um in the podcast app if you actually take a look at the the well this is the mobile blazer but if you took a look at just mobile and you took a look at um uh, pages and then mobile shell this is the shell here so we have just tabs tab 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 so one thing that you see here is, is pretty interesting. So this is the listen together page. And I'm going to go to this listen together page and show you what that looks like, which is right here. And that page is just a Blazor web view. Man, pretty cool. So you can use shell and all the things I've been showing you and just put them into into a shell, you know, all, all the Blazor stuff and put it into a shell, for example, there. So you can do all that. It's cool. Fahim says it's a cold, a good evening, chilly cold. It was really cold here last night. I was in the 20s. But I family back in the, the mid uh, Midwest here in the States. And they said it was like one degree, negative 17 Fahrenheit. Too cold. George, good to see you. Marcus, good to see you as well. Marcus asking some questions. Since I'm a mobile, since you are a mobile expert too, I like to pretend that I am. Marcus, I don't know if I am. <laughs> Eddie as much I am I a little bit I I, I know the mobile tiny bit um, let's see 
how would you go about doing transitions in Blazor Maui? I don't see anything about supporting it. Uh, probably just CSS transitions, probably is what I would do. It's like animations, transitions, translations. That's all CSS gobbledygook, you know what I mean? You just go in there and do all that stuff. Pretty sure, I think. If you're doing Blazor, you're just gonna do Blazory things. So whatever Blazor does, that's what you would do. You know what I mean? Probably CSS transitions, probably. Around negative eight C, that is way too cold. Well, actually, I guess negative eight. That's 17. So yeah, it was about what it was. It was about, yeah, it was about like negative there. Which one, Aiden? Which technical term? Adrian, good to see you as well. Um, yeah, I mean, you can see so there's there's um, some other samples of .NET Maui plus Blazor that you can take a look at that show you how to share state between the two different objects, right? So you can share state between your um, between your um, native views and also your web web views as well. So you just share like a, a common state. We learned about state here as well. So CSS gobbledygook. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, because you know CSS is just like. CSS, it's a thing. How do you add CSS in Xamarin? Uh, yeah, it's a great. So, um, you can do that. Like, what you would end up doing is like I like to style my controls in in just XAML. But if you're if you have Blazor UI in your .NET Maui application, then you would want um, then you would want um you know, to do web stuff or your web views, right? You're not going to style your native controls with your web controls. You could, but you could share the state there. They'll probably be a little bit different because there's like kind of web standards and then there's like .NET MAUI Xamarin form standards. So you would want to take a look at those, but you could probably share a lot of your CSS or inherit from some base classes there probably. So many questions in the chat. My, my goodness, my goodness, people. Thanks for tuning in. Let's answer a few more. Um, yeah, because Mark is yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't leverage native transition effects while using Blazor and Maui. No, for your native controls, yes, but not for your Blazor controls. <laughs> Ready for JavaScript? No, never, never. I guess today we are going to do some JavaScript. That's right. I heard that's a little scary. Um, yeah, something like Animate JS. And yeah, any of your JavaScript libraries, you could use that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's probably some Blazor libraries out there to do um, animation, so I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I always kind of recommend like Awesome Blazor is the repo. Adrian puts that together as well. Take a look at that. Um, you can take a look at that. There you go. Okay, what else we got? Uh, oh my gosh, so many questions. How can we deploy security? I don't know what you mean exactly. Like identity login? Just look look Google security plus Xamarin form since the same. Um <clears throat> what do you use for Ricardo? Ricardo, what do you use for hosting web app and SQL server? All sites that I know are too expensive. Um I just use Azure. There's multiple free tiers. You can get a SQL server as low as like $5 a month um, for the basic tier. And then websites, I think you can do a free tier or a basic tier for dev, which, you know, kind of spins up and spins down. Um, those are either free uh, or not. You can also just subscribe, you know, sign up for Azure credits too to get free websites hosted. But I think it starts at like 20 bucks or something like that. Uh, a uh, month, I'm not really positive. But if you're doing like a static web app, you can also do that too. That's free, um, which is really cool. We learned about that. We did that um, on, a, on a different live stream. But oh, here's a static web app. Static web apps. Here you go. Found it. There you go. Static web apps. So it depends what your app's doing. But you can deploy a Blazor app, a Blazor WebAssembly app, to a Blazor a static web app. So, I 
Don't know if my voice is low or not loud enough. I know I'm pretty loud, I think. I'm looking at my control volume, so that should be pretty high, but let me know in the chat because I don't want to peek too much over there. That'd be bad in general. So just let me know, but it's it's pretty much at the max right now. That is the max volume. It might be a tiny, a tiny bit bigger. Um, thanks for the link. Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. See if anyone anyone can come in. Anytime we get these like spam ones, the moderators, you can just go in and you can just say um, hide user on this channel is what you can do. And then pew, down. Um, can you explain more about custom element? I don't know what that means. Um, may have a speak. Okay, cool. Sound seems okay. Cool. Thanks. I'm going to take a look. Has anyone done a session on Una? The Una people have. I haven't played around with Una too much. But it's built on top of just .NET, and there's also Xamarin Forms compatibility. They, they look at it a different way. Like, Uno's really, um, like, I'm going to take WinUI style XAML and bring that to different, you know, different places. Um, and it's more, you know, stylized on the different platforms. Whereas, not custom drawn, um, but still, like, native, native-ish controls. And then, like, Avalonia is, like, WPF style. Um, to, to also go to multiple places where .NET Maui Xamarin Forms is, you know, from Microsoft. But it's one big ecosystem all built on top of same tool chain, same languages, same, uh, you know, code editors, things like that. So whatever you, whatever fits your, your application the best. That's all .NET. One .NET. No man goes around, unfortunately. Um, a bit confusing, um, Marcus says. Yeah, think of it like this, right? You have this big ecosystem out there. And I think it's the cool part about .NET, right, in general, is that um, that over the years since .NET's been around for a long time, just like kind of think of JavaScript. Like JavaScript, there's a lot of ways of building web apps, right? You could build an Angular app, a React app, a Vue app, right? And they all use... JavaScript and different components. You can think about that, but like for the .NET ecosystem, right? I think that's the cool part about it is if you look at .NET more as like a JavaScript ecosystem, what you have is you have many companies and communities that have had their own niches that they want to build for. And those niches have grown into really big projects. So um, you look at a company like um, um, that does Uno, right? They want to... Um, bring the WinUI XAML from Windows to other platforms um, is like kind of like what they decided, like what was there going to be their thing. And they wanted it to be more streamlined, similar UI between all the platforms. So, you know, a button just looks like a normal button. So an iOS button doesn't necessarily look like an iOS button or an Android button. So they wanted the similar UI. And then Avalonia, that team, like their idea was like, hey, we have this great desktop WPF platform that's been around for 15 years. I want to run that on Mac and Linux. So they did it. And then they also now run it in more places. And, you know, Xamarin as a company enabled those scenarios to do iOS and Android for .NET and Mac as well, right? Which is cool. And then on top of that, the, the plan was to then say, hey, you can access and build the native UI components, like, or probably what you want to do is do something cross platform. So at the time, like Xamarin wasn't Microsoft, right? So we, they could have, they could have adopted like a, a, a UW, well, it wasn't even UWP at the time. It was like Windows, Windows 8, Windows 8 XAML, I think, and Windows Phone at the time, right? This is like six years ago, seven years ago. And then eight years ago. Hey, Alex, Mr. Blount, we're, do, we're, we're doing a background history of, of Xamarin. Oh my goodness, you came in at a great time. Israel, thank you for subscribing to the channel. I appreciate that. Um, right, the team had to make a decision. Like, what do you do? Uh, and in fact, XAML wasn't even the, the way you built apps originally. It was all C sharp. Um, but XAML was added later because there's a strong demand from the community uh, to add XAML on. We'll make Alex a moderator too. How many moderators can I have? I mean, we just had a great chat yesterday with, with that. Sun's coming out over here. It's going to start peeking in soon, I'm sure. Um, so, yeah, the team just had to make a decision. They decided, like, hey, you know, if they want to evolve 
independently it is it was its own company then have your own style of, of UI there and then down in Maui adopts a lot of the you know 99% of what came from Xamarin forms for the the control names and the parameters so you don't want to break stuff right you don't want to break every single application out there that's no fun you want a smooth transition up so hopefully that is a great background definition explanation for you um, as well uh, Fahim says, can we target just a particular platform in Maui? Just Android. Yeah, totally. Go into the CS proj and just remove the other ones that you don't want. You want them later? Add them back in or just ignore them. Yeah, totally there. Totally the same thing. So you're all good. That's what I would do. New asks, why isn't Maui supporting web like Flutter? Blazor's more for web developers, HTML, CSS. Well, it's just not at launch, you know, right now. Um, there's the Blazor hybrid. So if you're a web developer, being able to blend that in. Also, Blazor's not that much different, except for CSS, I would say, um, to bring it in. Because Blazor's all about writing C-sharp, not JavaScript. Um, although, the more I do Blazor, the more I'm like, yeah, it feels pretty xaml to me. Especially when you start to bring in custom components and things like that, too. Uh, which is cool. Uh, just like, you know, why didn't Flutter support web in the very first alpha that it put out? It only supported iOS and Android because resources development. You know what I mean? That's pretty much it, I would say. But you can always add more platforms over time. You know, Tizen still works pretty great on it. Um, the Tizen team's working hard there. And then also there's a Linux back then, too. Adrian says... Would you advise using the Maui preview for now or stick to Xamarin for now? That's a great question. Yeah, I like that too, Alex. Mud Blazer is super cool. And also, we do talk about um, um, him updating Mu, uh, Wii as well. Uh, I think he did a long time ago, Marcus. He did a Flutter example somehow. I don't really know how it works or, you know, he, he hacks. Since <laughs> Steve Sanderson hacks on crazy amounts of code all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mud Blazer is pretty great because there's a lot of great components in there. Also, the fluid, uh, fluent UI, the fast framework, fast dot design is pretty cool too. Um, I don't know. I'm still doing most of the apps that I ship every single day are Xamarin Forms applications. Like I'm putting stuff in the store, and I need it in the next before .NET Maui ships. Probably there are companies and people shipping .NET Maui apps into the App Store today. Like that's the thing that's happening. So if you want to do that, then you could totally do that. But just support policy is what you want to look like. .dot Maui is a, is the supported or Xamarin Forms is a supported official thing uh, until .dot Maui comes out, things like that. So, but I think it's good to start playing around with it. The nice thing is that all your XAML and stuff will move over. You know, you might get some different styling, especially on Windows, because that'll use like the new hotness. But you know, that's kind of up to you. Like, I'm definitely going to move my stream timer over to Don and Maui. Like, probably the first app I do. And that's only desktop. Like, that will only be desktop there. The biggest thing to kind of take a look at is if all the NuGet packages that you um, use in your application uh, support it. You know, support, uh, have Don and Maui support built in or not. So, yeah. Any performance difference? This is the last one. Then we'll start doing some stuff. Um, that depends. I mean, if you're always using like the native bits and pieces, like technically this should be the fastest because there's no interop, there's no crossover between the layers. The idea is like these phones are so flipping fast at this point. I mean, you can't really tell. I mean, I opened my app that I just built. I just built a ski park app. Um, all right, I'm gonna press the button and. I'm gonna see how long it takes to start. Okay, it's open and it's running. Okay, that took, and this is an iPhone SE, that's not even like the, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, this is up and running in five seconds <laughs> and have, with all the data. And for it to boot past the load screen, less than one quarter of a second, you know what I mean? Like, from a cold boot, ready? And it's live. So, I mean, you couldn't even, <laughs> it's so fast. <laughs> so it doesn't even matter. And I, I test that on the old Pixel 2 as well. Well, of course, you can always write bad code and slow it down if you do a lot of stuff on startup, which is bad, too. Can we put our, our Blazor components that use native dependencies in a... I don't know what RCL means. Oh, Razor class library and add it to Maui. Yes, I think so. Mike, good to see you. Thanks for being a member. I appreciate that. Uh, 
I think so. Mod, I'm not I'm not 100% positive, but I think so. Yeah, I am. Uh, my apps are super fast. So, uh, you know, there's LLVM compilation and all sorts of pre stuff that you do. It's all super nice, especially iOS. It's just I mean, this is this is a two year old phone that's not even there. Your your app if you if it starts after ten seconds, well in debug it's gonna start slower, right? Always, like be aware of that because it's it's doing a full compilation, it's doing a full boot up, it's booting the debugger, it's booting a whole bunch of stuff, the full runtime, and 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 things are happening cross communication. When you actually compile and put everything together, right, and actually go through a full compilation, a full linker, all the things, just like in Blazor, right? There's like all this compilation you do when you release your application. It's always going to be way crazy faster in release mode, right? So if your app is starting and it takes 10 seconds, then that there's probably a problem somewhere else. Adrian, thank you so much for being a member. Just subscribing up. Thank you so much. Of course, that helps out the channel. Welcome to the Code Monkey crew. Woo. Appreciate that be part of some exclusive streams and videos and a whole bunch of things in the community feed on um, a channel. There's a whole bunch of cool things and surveys that I do over there for the members. Appreciate that. Um, but yeah, Fahim, definitely take a look at the release documentation. Um, of course, like I said, if you're in debug mode, it's going to take a lot longer because it's debugging the application. Whew. Man, we just talked about a lot of stuff. <laughs> that is for sure. Um, do I plan on doing a Maui course on Pluralsight? Not me, uh, you know, because I'd have to do stuff, you know, I'd put it out for free, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, personally, I'm, I'm not, like, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I would definitely find you take a look at your startup code. Make sure you're not doing anything in your startup as well. Um, you take a look at my coffee app. Uh, sample. That's the thing I've been building out live here, which is good too. I'd be good to go. I'm sure somebody will. I should probably work with someone on that and do that there. But yeah, I, I do appreciate it. Yeah, I mean that's a weird that's a weird balance, right? I mean my day job is working at Microsoft Developer Advocacy. My whole thing is giving away free content, so I'm not against it if the Plural Site team wants to make it all for free. So if anyone knows anyone at Plural Site and they want to give it away with no paywall, no sign up, I'm down. But definitely look out. We're gonna have Microsoft Learn content drop in for free. That's from um, I've worked with the team um, to build that out. We're gonna be doing some one-on-one -on -one videos. We're gonna be doing a whole bunch of stuff. So you're gonna see my face. You're gonna see this mug everywhere. So <laughs> maybe, hopefully, more like Maddie and and David and other people. I'm just. This is a manager now. I was in a call. As I told Alex, Mr. Blounty, I said, I'm, I'm just a manager now. I'm just a manager now. Although I am giving some wicked user group talks. I'm really excited about it. Next week, uh, I tweeted it out. Uh, I put it on my LinkedIn uh, doing Blazor Maui stuff introduction. Super excited. Adriano's got a cool mug. I'm going to redo all my badges and a bunch of other stuff too. I got to get with my design team. So. Mm. Yeah, Carl's cool. Yeah, should, I'll reach out to Carl. You can get on the Don M. Owie train. I mean, what I think Carl should do, if I was Carl. Carl, if you're, Carl, if you're listening. Carl, if you're listening. Uh, since he does so much blazer, right? Just kind of like uh, Fritz on my team. Uh, I'm encouraging them to really double down on the on the .NET Maui blazer, blazer hybrid train because that's a natural progression, right? You don't have to worry so much about all of the native bits and pieces. You can just really focus in on that. So that's what I would say overall. This has been a good conversation. We're 30 minutes into the stream and I haven't done anything yet, which is great. Um, that's okay too, um, which I'm excited about. Cool. Ooh, what's this thing do? Oh, cool, nice, nice. Uh, but that is a good idea. Let just tell why don't you ping Carl? Let him know. Say, hey Carl, James had this great idea. He had a great idea. He never has ideas. James never has ideas, but he's got one. All right, so we got two more live episodes back in the Blazer Learning series because you know I've been talking about Don and Maui plus Blazer together for a while, but like I don't even know what I'm talking about, right? I'm just uh just all over the place. Now and forever. 
Heiko, thank you so much for becoming a m m m m m m member. Welcome to the Code Monkey Crew, Code Monkey Crew. We make awesome donations to really cool nonprofits in the world. Um, <laughs> whoa, awesome from Germany. We're in Germany, Heiko. I spent a lot of time in um, Munich mostly because I spent a lot of time in Romania, so that was my stopover. Is Blazor enough to work with Maui or do we need to know XAML? Uh, no, you can just do everything in Blazor. Yeah, here's a good example. I mean, I mean, if you're, yeah, you're, you're fine. Take a look at, take a look at this app over here. This is the mobile Blazor app. Yeah, I mean, if, <laughs> so, okay, so check this out. A good question. So as we're talking about Blazor. This is the, the podcast app, right? So I keep talking about the podcast app because I help work on this podcast app. Look at this thing. Ooh, pretty. Okay, so there's like pages and there's, look, there's index.razor and then there's, there is some XAML. There's a main page and it is this. So that, that's how much you need to know. There you go. Well, hint, hint, I totally answered your question earlier, by the way, because you asked it earlier. You got to rewind all the way back to the beginning five minutes in and that's where I answered it Ooh, what's this? that's kind of cool so yeah that that's all you really do there and that's it and it just this one links in for example just a uh it links in a in a uh razor class library and that's it it's all 100% blazer 100% well, here's what we've been doing since we're talking about Blazor. In fact, we should probably, at some point, we'll probably on this build a web application with Blazor, have another module, which is like create a hybrid app with, with Blazor. Like take the app, the pizza app, shove it in a mobile app or a desktop app, and boom, you're good to go with .NET MAUI. So we'll probably work on that too. So we've done a bunch of these modules. So if you're brand new to the, the live streams, my goal uh, for 2022, January, I think we're going to make it was to learn blazer a little bit better because i don't know anything about web development people i don't know anything um and i've been taking these modules over here right as we go through and we did these all live together so these are all on my youtube channel they're all archived in the blazer live stream learning thingy um whatnot and they all have icons now look at the little badge up there got things over here um there and then today we're going to be learning about we did this forms one that was kind of cool we're build this one which is build rich interactive components for your blazer web apps so this one says we're going to interrupt with javascript code use templated components and handle events in the life cycle of components so we'll see how far we get. I'm not really sure. Yeah, hint, I answered your question earlier in, in the stream. So you gotta go back, back in time. So it says we're gonna use JavaScript today. We're gonna use some JavaScript. Look at that, JavaScript. We're gonna do some lifecycle events and we're gonna use some components. I don't think we've uh, accessed the DOM yet. I guess you would access the DOM from JavaScript. So I guess we would do that. Um, um, Blitz, I'm pretty sure. But I haven't done it yet, so I'm still learning. Still learning. Um, can Blazor do shell-like navigation? Oh, there's a different question. Um, yeah, I'm pretty, it's all URL-based navigation, so it just navigates. However you navigate in Blazor would be the same. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, we we learned about that. Go back. Uh, we this use pages, routing, and layouts. That's how we navigate. Yeah, you just navigate. Yeah, same thing. That's what we're gonna do. And then next week, we're going to finish it off with build reusable components with Razor class libraries. That'd be cool. This one looks shorter. I like that. These ones are long. They're long, but good. So we're going to start up and you can follow along at home or do some pizza. Um, and these are these are fascinating. So if you've never done a learn module before, is it free? 100% for free. You don't, even, you don't even need to log in. I'm logged in because I, you know, I'm logged in over here. And um, you can get points that don't mean anything, but they're points. So who doesn't like points? Um, and yeah, what it does is we can see here the outline. It's like you learn something, do something, learn something, do something, learn something, do something, and then you summarize it. So today we're going to talk about building rich uh, interactive web apps with .NET 
and specifically rich interactive components. So that we're gonna call JavaScript from .NET and .NET code to JavaScript. Well, crazy um, <laughs> as well. Um, we're gonna handle events in the life cycle of Blazor components and create reusable components that can be incorporated into a Blazor server app using templates. I don't even know what that means. So now we're gonna learn stuff. And sometimes, I mean, there's a lot of like learning, but we gotta take a quiz at the end. So I should probably read something. Um, okay, so there's a lot of reading here. So I'm gonna summarize it. Hey, Syed, how's it? it's good to see you. Thanks for being in. We just started the learn module over here. So I'll paste it in here one more time for anyone that's there. Uh, okay, cool. So we're working on, we're working for a pizza deliverer company. That's what we've been doing for the last month. We're there. Uh, is there a data grid component built in? No, you'd probably want to look at the like web forms components for Blazor or look at Telerik or Syncfusion or any other company that's there because there's tons of data grids. Yeah, out there, but not like built in. There's actually really not any built in components of Blazor. There's really no components there, but maybe like fast or mud blazer things like that there's a lot of things out there just google data grid blazer <laughs> special effects included yes always ricardo okay so typically blazer components uh, blazer component lay contains layouts and user interface logic that's used to generate an html page at runtime Use C-sharp code to handle events. Uh, in many cases, you don't need to utilize JavaScript because the Blazor model together with .NET libraries provides its equivalent, right? So it handles the Blazor ship. The Blazor has its own, and there's like a shadow DOM back there that it can modify via um, web requests or directly in the, in, the, in, the, in the browser. Blazor enables you to integrate JavaScript libraries into your applications using JavaScript interop or JS interop. Use JS interop to call JavaScript from .NET methods or vice versa. Okay. Now remember here, this is the important part of, of Blazor is it maintains its own DOM document object module mod, model module as a virtual render tree. Okay. So as the structure of the page changes, Blazor generates a new render tree that contains the diff. So it's doing diffs as it changes. If you were to move and translate something. When the changes are complete, Blazor iterates through these differences, updates the UI, and lets the browser display the differences of the DOM. So if your JavaScript code modifies elements of the DOM, this is the important part, the Blazor representation may no longer match the current state. This can result in unexpected behaviors and possibly introduce risk. The section of update the DOM with JavaScript later in this unit summarizes how you can address this. So that's cool. So. Here we go. This is how you load JavaScript. This looks pretty familiar. So you can load it up by putting it into your scripts over here. And there already is one. So here's the Blazor JavaScript, Blazor Server JS. And this is like a gauge. So this is just a random JavaScript library, apparently I'm pulling it in. So I guess you could put jQuery in there if you wanted to. Yeah. I guess you could do it there. Yeah. Oh, Saya, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you haven't yet <laughs> all right cool and then you can just write scripts here so you can just run javascript scripts place javascript files in the dub dub root all right cool um and then it looks like you can also yeah if you're running like here's jquery we're talking about that here is you can just reference the the script file there now you probably wouldn't want to do that if it's a web assembly app because it's offline things like that so you might want to be aware of 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 how to do that uh, which is cool. So add a script, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So here's how you use a script. So use an open source library to display temperature data. So we're all used to this thing here. Um, so this is showing us how to do it. We're not going to do it yet. I'm pretty sure. Right. So it says you can download it. You would do this NPM canvas gauge. Oh, that's cool. So you just use NPM install to do it. Um, just like you normally would the library gauge will be downloaded into the node modules canvas under dub dub roots folder, and then you would include it. That's cool. So then open this page and add two empty columns, and then use these headers. Okay. 
There's our canvas. So now we're just like using stuff, like just as if you were doing normal stuff, right? Basically, if you were a web developer shoving in data into here. Oh, and there's even a data value thing. That's cool. It says when you run and build the app, go to the fetch data stage. The temperatures are displayed graphically using JavaScript library. So that's what they would look like. Whoa, cool. That's neat. Deploy JavaScript libraries to Azure. Whoa. If you want to add JavaScript files as a local resource in a Blazor server project, you must ensure that the file is transferred correctly when you deploy the app to the web server. Using Visual Studio Code Editor, make sure you do this. Copy to output directory. Oh, interesting. That's cool. Okay. So if we want to now call JavaScript from .NET Code, this is probably the more, the more realistic thing, right? Because this is just... I've just included it and I've kind of included a control over here. And that's cool that you can do the binding still. All right, that's kind of neato. Hey, Jose, good to see ya. Good to see ya. Welcome over here to the stream. Everyone should go check out Jose. I think he's twitching all the time. Are you Twitch streaming? You drop a, drop a link in there for where you're at. I'm super impressed with your layout. I've been cleaning off my desk. I can't really show it right now, but I'm working on it to get a sweet setup like you, Jose. I'm working on it. Okay, cool. So this, this is probably what you'd want to do the most is sometimes you just need to call a little JavaScript. Like sometimes you need to like launch a website from code, for example, that that's a, a thing that you probably want to do. There's this invoke async or invoke void async to call JavaScript methods. And you can even await on it, which is cool. So there's promises. So update the title in the page header. I don't think you really need to do this anymore because there's a there's a title property in Blazor now. But if you needed to, uh, this is the JavaScript. So change title, and then here, you know, you could invoke the change title, and then you would pass it a parameter. So that's kind of cool. Like you're defining this change title over here, and then you're just calling this JavaScript method. It's kind of cool. And then look at updates. Boom. Whoa, 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 whoa. Update the DOM with JavaScript using an element reference type. Ooh. So many third-party libraries are available to render elements on the page. These libraries make up these libraries make updates, make updates uh, to the DOM as described earlier. Blazor maintains its own copy of the DOM, so it's important to, to important not to make changes that can cause the Blazor view of the DOM to become corrupted. Simplest way to handle this is to create a placeholder element in the Blazor component. Usually with a div, your Blazor code simply sees this content as blank and Blazor render tree doesn't attempt to track its contents. Oh, that's cool. So you can be like basically ignore. Okay, so you pass a reference to the element from Blazor to JavaScript by creating an element reference. The fragment below shows a div element added to the fetch. This div will be used to display a line graph showing the temperature. Wow, that's cool. Plotty, plotty. Uh, probably there's just so much JavaScript libraries. You can create an element reference with the at ref. Okay, so here, this is what it's showing, is that we're inserting a graph into here, right? Basically, and we're calling this method called show graph. Right, but this is the placeholder and we're passing it data over here. So we have the CDN, a plotty. Oh, here's the method show graph where we're taking in data, the, the graph div, we're calling this method plotting new data. That's cool, just in JavaScript. And then we show this thing, that's cool. Making it robust, oh, interesting. So Blazor server running your app, add, add the browser, remember that, Blazor server running your Blazor app and the browser running your JavaScript code that you call from are running on different processes. They're different. They communicate via signal R. Networks are prone to connection loss, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so there's a timeout. Basically, you can give it a timeout here. Add server side Blazor and you can say give it a timeout of 120 seconds. That's cool. Hmm. To specify the timeout for a particular call, provide the, the timeout period with invoke so you can say hey oh, timeout after 30 seconds cool call dot net code from javascript that's even more crazy um javascript code can run in a dot net method 
define in your blazor code because they define invoke method and invoke method async. Whoa. Um, define method as async if you're calling async. That makes sense. Cool. So this is cool. So we have this method. Whoa, cool. So this is neato. So um, that's a note change to static causes a bug. So should we not make it static? Uh, I'm going to have to just Jeff about that. I don't know what that's there for. <laughs> what is that? Uh, we'll see. Okay. So you just add this JS invocable here and then you call this now. Ideally, you probably actually wouldn't do it this way. I mean, this is a very convoluted scenario, right? Because you would, you would just make this a normal method that you would call over here. But if you wanted to, then this technically is JavaScript, but I would. I would probably say you don't need to do that there. Oh, I see what it's doing. I see. It's like this is the calculate averages, uh, which is calling this dot net dot invoke method async. Oh, that's kind of cool. Hey, Gustav, good to see you. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Okay. Well, there's a lot of stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, bah, 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 bah. What's this? Call a .NET instance method from JavaScript. To run instant method, JavaScript requires an object reference. Okay, so that's static. This would be like an, an actual reference method. So we have an object reference. Populate object reference. Ooh. Oh, so when the window loads, you can get a, a, a reference to basically the code behind. That makes sense. That's cool. And then you don't have to make it static. You just make it a... Ooh, a dot net object reference. That's so interesting. Okay. So if you're going to include a JavaScript file on a blazer page, what is a recommended way to do it? Add a script on the blazer page, add a script to the pages host CSHTML. Or add a script to the razor. Well, I'm pretty sure you don't add it to the razor pages. It's the razor files itself. I'm pretty sure it's on this host because it already is CSHTML. So I'm going to go with that one. Oh, this is tricky. Uh, okay. Which method? This is it's not as tricky. Maybe. Okay. Which method should be used to invoke JavaScript from C sharp that returns void? Well, this is the only one that says void in it. Does say async though, so I'm gonna go with that. Let's check it out. Oh, I did. Okay, cool. Done. All right, let's do it. Next one. So we're actually gonna do stuff now. Wow, 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 wow. All right, so we're gonna open up code over here. All right, and we are going to do what? All right, we're gonna do list our SDKs. Let's do that. Terminal, new terminal, mm. .NET list SDKs. And we got all the SDKs. Oh, yeah. So we got 6001 and the preview. Got that new preview for .NET Maui Preview 12, new hotness uh, over there. It's cool. All right, cool. We're good to go. We're going to clone this. Let's do that. So let's do um, this. So we're going to go to... So we're on our desktop. I'm going to clone this repo into Blazing Pizza. Okay. I'm using VS Code just because that's what they say to use inside of here. So we're going to use that. I'm going to say code dot and just open this a new one up. Perfect. Oop. Cool. Now we're here. We're in. We're in it. So we just have like a pre-built app. Can I hit F5? Is that what they're going to ask me to do? I bet that's what they're going to ask me to do. Press F5 and let's see what kind of pizzas we got. Okay. All right. Hopefully it runs. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, restore. Update? <laughs> Update? I don't know. Uh, let's try F5 again. It's kind of cool that it all just kind of just comes down and just magically works over here. This is using a preview build of .NET 6. So that's kind of cool. Let's check it out. Ba -da -da -ba 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 -ba. 
Boop. All right. We got pizzas that are blazing. And we can move so pizzas over here. We can order stuff. All right. Oh, there's nothing at this address. Okay, cool. We're kind of interesting. I thought in the previous one, we did stuff that actually implemented the header stuff, but maybe they just put them in different orders. All right, cool. All right. So we're not doing that one. This is the one we're doing. So we're going to take a look at the index and we're going to inject the runtime over here underneath this. Okay. Oh, what is our actual task? All right. When a customer adds a pizza to their orders, they can select X to remove it. The company thinks customers might have been clicking this um, and accidentally removing items from their order. Oh no. You'll add a feature that prompts the user to make sure they want to remove the pizza. Super common over here. Oh, Marcus says they were considering a simple grid. I don't know if they ever did. That's a good question. Pizza company wants to be able to show customers the live status of their order. You'll update the order detail page to query the order status in real time. That's cool. And this exercise, you'll extend an existing app and do this stuff here. So let's do it. So we're going to go into our, what I like to do is I like to do this. So we'll make this smaller and make this smaller as well. Oops. This here, this here. Let's see where y'all can see it on the screen or not. Okay. All right, so we're gonna open up. Let me get a little bit bigger, maybe. There we go. Perfect. All right, cool. So we're gonna open up pages. Blazerite. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of stuff out there. That's what I would say. Take a look at that. All right, so we're going to do at inject i j s IJS runtime, call it JS runtime. Okay. All right. So we got the runtime. And it says currently on click. Currently on click, it it simply calls remove configured pizza method. That's on here. So we have specials. We have show configured. We have the sidebar. So here is the the X, right? So there's this, there's this delete pizza. Does anyone know how to get rid of this? This little sidebar thing? I never use this thing. Does anyone know how to get rid of this in Visual Studio Code? I don't know how to do it. Um, personally, not that, not that I'm mad at it. I just not using it. Okay, so we're going to remove that and we're gonna add a new confirm method in our code behind. Ooh, so down here. So we have a new, let's copy this in. So let's then take a look at it. All right, cool. So we have a, we're going to call, we have a method here, which is show confirm. All right. Oh, interesting. So this calls JavaScript and returns a Boolean. How do I pass complex parameters to a page? Um, add complex parameters. Probably a state object is what you want to do. There was a video we did a few, two weeks ago, hint, which is all about, you know, that stuff. But take a look at like, take a look at this learn module. You're asking as if I'm an expert in this stuff and I'm not, that's why I'm learning. Control shift P, control shift P. Oh, okay, and then do mini, whoa. Eric, thank you so much. I, not that I don't like the mini map. Nice. Just gives a little bit more space for everyone to see a little bit more code, you know, in general. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Uh, cool. So this is going to invoke a confirm. So I'm assuming confirm is a JavaScript method. Oh, look at this. Do you want to remove this pizza? And you can just do string interpolation from your order. All right. Oh, and we pass it the pizza. Cool. And then we remove it. Okay. So my assumption is that, see, I don't know why I don't have that. Oh, maybe I need to clear the cache on that. Let's see. So I'm assuming that what we'll do is show confirm instead. So if I go up here, 
we want to call this method? Don't really tell me what to do. Um, remove configured. Yeah, we want to do this. Show confirm. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Then we pass it the the pizza. Okay. Cool. See, so it doesn't actually tell me to do that. Add a new method call if the customer selects call this. Okay. This method takes the selected pizza. Sometimes I like to take notes here and be like, okay, what am I supposed to do? So I'm going to say this is in section three. I say update. These are all new, so I want to go through and I want to fix up. If I run into problems, I want to fix them up in code. So you'll see, actually see the previous ones I've added a bunch of pull requests to get pulled in. So this method takes a parameter, calls this. The response is here. So here it just says F5, but the thing is it doesn't tell you to like go update this thing. So we, we, we updated the click to call this here. So we can go into our terminal. I'm just going to say .NET run. Oop, actually, no, .NET watch done at watch so we can hot reload that puppy hot reload that puppy i'm also going to do a control shift r okay it doesn't look like it has a thing in there let me do a i'm wondering if like it i don't look like it all right. So we click on this, add it to our order. Oh, that didn't work. That didn't work because I didn't save the file. <laughs> yes. There we go. All right. That's going to rebuild and redeploy over here. All right. So we add it to our pizza. So now, eh, do you want to remove the buffalo chicken? No. I didn't do it. Yes. That's cool. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. All right. That was easy. That's actually really not bad at all. So that's that's fascinating that this is the confirm here. But I like that it is it's doing, you know, invoking, right? So it's literally returning the Boolean, though. That's cool. Add a third party class library to the Blazor app. The the pizza feels that customers would be confused by the word cancel in the pop up. They would be confused. That is clever. So we found sweet alert. Well, cool. All right, so we're gonna add the sweet alert. Sweet, it's sweet. All right, so we're gonna go into our hosts, CSHTML, and under the this one, we're gonna paste this in here. All right. JS deliver. That makes sweet alert now available. Whoa, cool. All right, let's update this code. We're not going to write it, but we're going to do this to show confirm. Ah, okay, cool. Let's do that. So we're going back into our here. So that just, that's cool. That just adds a script randomly. Oh, because it didn't download it, right? It, it's still, you need internet to make sure you load that thing. And we're, we're in a server app, so that's cool. So we're going to update this method. All right, let's get rid of this. Okay, so message parameters. Oh, this is interesting. So this is just anonymous type. So we're kind of guessing. We're like, hey, this JavaScript thingy wants to take these parameters and it's just going to pass it an object with a property bucket, basically. So you'd go and do that. So you have an, uh, an abort and a confirm. Leave it, leave it in my order, remove pizza, value true, false. That's cool. Icon is warning. All right. And then it's going to call. So this must be the method in the, in the thing, swall. And you pass it the message parameters. Cool. All right. Let's see if that hot reload worked. Add it. Unhandled. Oh, you know what? I bet I probably actually need to, oh, we gotta, I bet it didn't, um, it probably didn't, uh, doesn't know how to reload the JavaScript, probably. So let's add it to our order. Hey, oh, cool, that's amazing. 
I think that's cool. I didn't even do anything. Oh, this is a blazonator. So we can actually fix the typo in here. From typo in. Message param, just a little one, right? Are you sure? No. Maybe. Amazing. That is cool. Look at that. I mean, okay. I've been doing Xamarin work for a long time, and like, that's pretty cool. You know, it's just boom, here it is, and looks really cool, and that's gonna work the same across all of them. That's neat. That is cool. Adrian, I agree. JavaScript, man. It just it's out there. Cool, we did it. Update the order page to show real time. Well, this is a whole nother thing. Okay, cool. Um, let's do that then. Oh, how do I make that smaller? Uh, how can we know what string to put in the warning as the unum for it? Great question. So that's like anything, right? So we're just telling you what to do, but let's go check it out. I'm down to check it out. So we're gonna go look at sweet alert, sweet alert, JS, KS, no, JS. So this would be it, cool. So you just read the documentation, you know what I mean? Configuration, so there is title, and what we're looking for is, let's go back over here, because we can probably change it. There's warning, which is the icon, so we want to look at the icons so there's here. So this would be your configuration. Because it is JavaScript. So someone could make a Razor class library and make this all prettier and things like that. So you don't have to call the JavaScript directly. But uh, that's pretty cool. So let's do like info. Let's see what that looks like. Over here. Let's see what that looks like. And it looks like you can customize it yourself too. So that's so info there. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Nice. There you go. Mm. I don't know, Syed. Bindings are tricky. <laughs> I'd go through the documentation, try to debug it. You might have to add some additional data over there. Eclipse. Oh, my goodness. All right, so let's update the order page to show real-time orders. The order detail component currently shows the current status of a pizza order. Does it? I think there might be something missing from this. There's no checkout. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Do I have the wrong blazing pizzas? In the file explorer, yeah, there is no order details. Um, that's odd. Let's take a look here. Yeah, because they have the whole Chrome up here. I feel like something is wrong in this thing. Something wrong with that, that's for sure. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. That's why we do these modules live is like it doesn't seem like it has the code that I need in the file explorer explain pa pages add some stuff here this doesn't exist I don't know if I can do any of this you know what we could do is like bummer town is go back so let's do this 
I just deleted my old blazing pizza, uh, which is a bummer. So let's do this. Okay. Let me close this folder. All right. So I'm going to rename this. All right, so I have this one. This would be like the old one that I did. So let's let's open that one up and let's see. Can I show the error again? I didn't have an error. Well, the error is I don't have any code. So, so let's take a look here. I'm going to go back to the blazing pizza we finished previously over there. So let's see if that, so this is like we had done navigation and a bunch of other stuff. So I feel like, yeah, something is off with, off with whatever, um, whatever was in there previously. So if we load this puppy up, see it has all the pages in here. So I feel like whatever happened previously, something is, was wrong uh, over there because this one should have all the stuff. So someone is missing. Yeah, this 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 is the wrong thing. Let's replay this. Loki. So it's interesting. So something is off with this here. Like it's in the wrong state almost. It's kind of weird that it still works. Okay, odd. Because this thing didn't exist. Okay, let's try this out then. Let's close that. Gotta tell Jeff. Jeff, something's wrong. Jeff, something is wrong. Okay, let's try this out. Let's still debugging. No. Okay. Let's see. So it says to open up the order detail razor. It's kind of a bummer because if you're following along at home, you're not going to have that code. So bummer town, basically. Sorry. The page headers. Nice. I need more coffee, Adrian, as well. Yeah, so something's wrong there. So I had to go find a different learn module and I cloned that. And that's where we were previously. So if you've been following the other modules, you can continue this. But that's probably why there's some people that we gave it a few only stars. So let's add this tag here. I'm, I'm assuming it'll work. I don't know. Um, let's add an ID where where I don't know, but somewhere add an ID to the status. Oh, is there a status? Oh, here we go. Oh, so it says go find this and then do this. So we're going to replace this. Ooh, that was a good sneeze. All right, so this says find the status over here. Paste it in there. Okay, cool. Add a spinner to provide additional feedback. Add this bootstrap HTML. So this is saying, so this is like, go find this and put this up here above this. Okay. Oh no, that's not correct. Copy. Getting a new keyboard. I'm very excited that I'm getting a new keyboard. Uh, my keyboard spilled some water on it and now it's like really st not sticky. I took it apart, but it um, definitely has been. <laughs> Like missing a lot of keys and stuff like that. Okay, uh, we're gonna add JS interop and I disposable up here under invalid order. Create an object reference. All right, so we're gonna go down here. It's nice that these like build off of each other, but then yeah, it needs to start correctly. So that's interesting. 
After the page has been rendered, you can pass the object reference. Add this code into the code block. Hmm. Okay, I don't think we have this. Okay, cool. So this will, copy and paste in is always like pain in my butt because I feel like it doesn't get my tabs correct. So it's going to create a reference to this, and then it's going to call populate object reference method with itself. So it's kind of linking the JavaScript to itself, basically, is what it's doing over here. The code checks to make sure the reference is initialized, and then it passes it in. Okay, cool. Next, you can add the method that JavaScript will call on the client side. So we're going to invoke a method. So we're going to allow JavaScript to call C sharp. That's what we're doing here. So we're going to get this order status and it is going to basically call for this order ID URL. I'm just hoping this is going to work. And when it's all done, we're going to dispose. That's really easy. You could definitely forget to do that pretty much always. <laughs> so that'd be interesting. Uh, welcome people to the stream. We are following along at home. We're on this Microsoft Learn module, learning about Blazor, JavaScript, interrupt, um, calling JavaScript from our C Sharp and C Sharp from our JavaScript in our pizza application. So that's what we're doing now. It says call an instance method from JavaScript. There's two ways the client can get the current status order. You could have chosen to call the underlying API of the app and handle the JS response in JavaScript. Gross, 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 gross. Um, you would also need to call this function with an order ID component. Instead, you're going to call the order detail component. Okay. Let's see. Okay. In the file explorer, let's go into the host CSHTML. And then it says to at the bottom of the page above the closing of the body. We're going to add this in there. Okay, it's a bunch of code. This is a bunch of code. Okay, so we have an object reference. That's the method we're calling populate object reference, refresh order status. Interesting. The refresh order status invokes the method get order status, which is what we just created here. It returns the status text, queries the DOM, updates it, does a thing. Now, this is really interesting because it's like, well, what do you really need to do it this way? You could probably just do it all from C sharp. Let's be honest about it. So that's it. Okay, let's see if this works. Uh, let's try it out. Now, we don't have our fancy pop up anymore because I've now opened up a different project. So it's kind of a bummer, but this should ideally work. Let's check it out. So we have our mushroom lovers. Let's add it. Check out. Play. Oh. Preparing. I'm assuming that this is going to update. That's what it should do, right? Out for delivery. Whoa, cool. Okay. So this is querying every three seconds, I think, for a new. Yeah, right here. This is setting a timeout of three. Interesting. I don't see the progress spinner, though. Maybe I put it in the wrong place. Hmm. Start the app when the customer gets the status and the spinner is removed when it's delivered. Hmm. I was say, maybe I put it in the wrong place. Oh, I must have put it in the wrong place. That's a little confusing. Track order body. What? Track order title? Delivered. Okay, I must have done something wrong.
Oh, I wonder if I don't have the spinner class because I don't have the right code. I bet that's it. Yeah. I bet I don't have that code because it's a different module. So that's a bummer. At least it updated correctly. Yeah. I agree. There's probably some other better way of doing that. Let's continue on. Again, I'm, I'm going to... I might end up not being able to do some of this learn module because we're in this weird... Oh, my gosh. We're in this weird state that I can't really do a lot of stuff. I'm just like, look at this. Okay. Whew, lots of reading. Okay, let's read it up. The, the code is in the wrong place and that's a bummer town um overall let me check something here hmm. yeah there's just, it's just the wrong code. Cause I feel as though the, huh. I don't know which one it would be in. I feel like, yeah, it's just missing the wrong, it has the wrong code in it. That's a bummer town. That is a bummer town. Well, we'll see if this works or not. So it says improve app interactivity with lifecycle events. Maybe this is what it was talking about. Raheem could be. At least I was updating the status. It doesn't have the cool spinner though. Um, it says Blazor components are constituent parts of the Blazor apps. All views rendered by the Blazor app are created by using components. A Blazor component defines the layout and user interface logic. When the app starts running, it creates one or more components and uses those components to generate HTML. Cool. When those, when the user closes a page, perhaps by going to a different URL on the same page, the component is removed from the render tree maintained by Blazor. The component uses unmanaged resources. You should dispose of these at this point. Okay. That makes sense. So if the user returns to the page, a new instance of the component is created and the life cycle begins again. Look at this very simple flow chart. <laughs> this reminds me of Android activity stuff, basically create a component instance set parameter async initialize it awaits has a change it's a render loop this is the render loop here render the ui remove from the tree so for example here we have the forecast loads it up we display the weather easy peasy so this initializes it gets it good to go this says it's possible that the page might be rendered before the call to forecast async completes and the forecast array will still be null. To handle the situation, the markup near the top of the page looks like this. If get forecast operation is not completed, the page displays loading message. When the get forecast async finishes, it's rendered again. Yeah, that's definitely the problem. Fah Fahim, I will get that fixed. I'm gonna get it fixed, very upsetting. We'll see if the rest of it we can do it. I'm assuming maybe so. Understand the set parameters async. When you visit a page that contains a Blazor component, the Blazor runtime creates a new instance of the component and runs the default constructor. Once it's been constructed, set parameters async is called. These parameters are contained in a parameter view object that are accessible via this. So if we look down here, this is our fetch data page. We have a data parameter of date time. This gets passed in and we can parse it out. Basically we did that previously, which is cool. Understand uninitialized and uninitialized async. These messages are also inherited from component base and you can override them to include your own functionality. They run after set parameter. So set parameter happens first, then uninitialized. If render mode property of the application sets a server uninitialized and uninitialized async methods only run once for a component instance. That makes sense. It only runs once. That's interesting. If the set to pre-rendered, the uninitialized and uninitialized async methods run twice, once during the pre-rendered phase that generates the static output, and again, when the signal R connection is there. Interesting. So that's important if you're in pre-render mode, which I think, you know, live 
dot dot net is that way. It's a server pre-render, and you can see it just updated right there, um, which is fascinating. Oh, it just did it right there. That's the connection. So it pre-rendered, and then it updated. I'm going to be live with Mads later on the Visual Studio YouTube as well. Check that out, which is cool. So if you refresh it, pre-render comes in super fast. Connection did some stuff in my browser. That's cool. OK. Uh, no, constructors for Blazor components do not support dependency injection. But that's important to note. Understanding on parameter set and on parameter set async. These methods run after. So there's set parameters and on parameter set. That's interesting. Um, after render and after render async. These methods run every time Blazor runtime needs to update the view represented. Okay. On after render. So after it's rendered, then we have stuff in the DOM. We can get it. Okay. Don't confuse pre-rendering with the first render of a Blazor component. Pre-rendering occurs before SignalR connection has been established with the browser. It's used to generate a static version of the page. The first render occurs when the connection to the browser is fully there. Interesting. So in the live.net example, right? It's boom. It's there you go. Thanks, Aiden, for helping out with the moderation. Understanding dispose. So dispose happens when you just get rid of stuff. Handle exceptions and lifecycle events. If a lifecycle method component fails, it closes the signal arc connection. We've seen that before. And a little banner comes up at the bottom. So we should try catch stuff here, basically. Which of the following is not an event in Blazor component lifecycle? Uh, I think on page load, I want to say, yeah, I think on after render and on initialize async, those are definitely in there. Which of these events does not trigger a parameter set? Ooh, uh, well, these both have to do with parameters. So I'm going to go with this private fields are allocated. Okay, nice. Mm. All right, let's try this out. Let's see if we can do it or not. We'll find out. So this says, select our seed data. Let's go ahead and make this smaller. Boop. And let's see if this is over here running. Create a new family size pizza. Okay, let's try this out. In our seed data class. Boop. All right, put this down here. The class is used to pre-populate the pizza, these pizzas in the database. We're going to delete the pizza database to pre-render them. Okay, cool. All right, let's do this. Where's my terminal? Let's do .NET. Watch. Disable the size slider. As a configure pizza component uses a range HTML control, you use JavaScript to disable it. Okay, so we're going to bring this over here. Boop. Boop. Okay, so we're going to open up the hosts again. We have that. And this says at the bottom, inside the last script tag, we're going to disable the element. So it, that's interesting. We're going to create a JavaScript method called disable element, pass it an element, and disabled is set to disabled. OK. The function takes an element as a parameter. We're good. So we're going to go into our configure pizza dialog. I don't know if that exists. Yeah, I don't know how anyone could finish this because it's not here. Uh, into shared. Okay, shared. Configure pizza dialog. Whew, I was a little worried there that it wasn't there. Let's go ahead and inject. At inject ijs runtime js. Oops. I don't know what you're doing over here. Uh... Okay. 
you'll be able to pass a reference to the size change input. So that's this one, the range at ref equals size range. Okay. And our code block, we're going to create a element reference of size range. All right. After the component has been rendered, it's safe to disable the control. All right. So if the pizza is margarita family size, oh, I see. Disable the element in here. Yeah, that's it. This should just be like if first render and let me get rid of that. It's, that is silly code. Silly code. There we go. It's better. Sometimes I just don't like how, you know, just put it all in one line. You don't need two if statements here. You know, if the special pizza, we're going to call this disable element, pass it the size range and we're good to go. How's it? Oh, I guess it knows. Okay. Uh, we're going to do always cool. Let's see if that works. Now I have to go buy a pizza. I know I always want to buy. I always want to eat pizza right after this. We've got a I'm doing Atkins right now, so I am currently I'm about to reload this puppy. We have a uh, we have a uh, cal uh, cauliflower pizza crust one uh, that is waiting for to me to be consumed. Maybe I'll make that for lunch. Sounds good. Where's our pizza? At? Oh, margarita family style. Oh, so look at that. So it doesn't work. So I'm trying to move this thing. So it called it and disabled this element. Interesting. Cool. So this one works. This one doesn't work. Although it's not like the prettiest thing uh, there. Doing keto myself, but exceptions. Yeah, I'm, you know, funnily enough, like keto and Atkins. I did Atkins as a kid. And I lost like 45 pounds or so. And I was like about 16 or 17. Me and my dad did together. Um, we did... Um, I'm just doing Atkins again, mostly because I'm not a huge fan of keto. I feel like I'm not a huge fan of like high fat diets and I already know Atkins and they already have like, you know, beverages and stuff on the market. Um, they're very similar though. They're very similar, but also a little bit different um, in a way. So it's just high protein, mostly no carbs, but keto, I think goes a little bit further than the Atkins diet. So yeah. Are you using any apps or anything, Marcus, like track or stuff like that? I've been trying to use the Atkins app, but I just get more annoyed at the end of the day anyways. Okay, it says currently the, the price is correct, but the size is showing the default of 12 inches. Oh, in the configure pizza catalog, we need to set the default size to 24 inches. So let's open up the model pizza. Default size of 24. Oh, okay. So we're going to set this not to that. We're just going to do get set. That's interesting. I'll change that from here. Equals 12. There we go. Okay. So then it's going to say, yeah, that's also not correct. Change show. So we need to find the show configure pizza dialog. Uh, okay. How's this in here? Oh, this is in here. No. Cause this is saying open this, which is incorrect. I'm assuming that's in our index. Or no, that's in our here. Close all. Where is this thing at? That would be in our index, no? Check out. How, where is it when I... Click on a pizza. Configure pizza. 
order state. Order state? Show configure pizza dialogue. That's order state. Okay. This one here says the method access they feel size after size. equals it's already doing it though oh oh this says remove it from here and then this says make it interesting Okay, so this says set the size equal to the default size instead of the pizza size. Okay. Now when the component loads, the pizza is set to family. Okay. At the top of the after render class, add this code. Is that in here? That's a little confusing. Okay. I'm, I'm a little confused. Yeah, I mostly am, like I said, I've, I've been, I haven't been, been doing intermittent fasting. It seems like a little bit too much room, but I do a lot of exercising. I've been doing a lot last year. I haven't like gained any weight, I don't think. I've been feeling okay about myself, but mostly just want to kind of try to trim down a little bit. Pretty much. Configure pizza. So this says on after... At the top, where? Let's see, it's in this configure pizza. Oh, okay, on after load. I see why they did that. Interesting. Okay. Okay, so this here, and then do that. So we're going to change the pizza sizes, and then we're going to say if first render, then disable it. Interesting. OK. All right. Let's see if that did it. Whoa. OK. So now when I tap on this, it says only 24 inches. That's correct. So the inches is correct here. Is it? I don't know if it is. Let's try this again. Oh, nothing has changed. Ah, oh, come on now. It totally bamboozled me. Because this should say 24, but nothing has changed. Ah, oh, man. Changing when the pizza size is updated in the lifecycle events. You got me. You got me. Okay. <laughs> Let's move the code to on initialized. You got me. You got me. Okay. You got me. In the Okay. So for That's silly. So this is saying move it here, then change it and disable element. Let's test it. That's great. The pizza is going to show the correct size but the slider isn't disabled. Oh man. Come on. Come on, learn module, tricky. So I was like, we're gonna move it here to on initialize because we wanna initialize the pizza. Over here, oh, thanks, yeah. Bunch of people worked out, it's pretty good. So, here, okay, now it says 24 inches of pizza, that's good. But the slider is still enabled, oh my gosh, okay. So now what it's saying is I need to actually do this. Oh, this is so silly. It's good learning, I understand what they're doing. They're teaching you the stuff. They're teaching you the stuff. So this says on initialized, if it's the Mark pizza, we would probably want to have a, a Boolean that says is family size. That's just me personally, but what do I know? And then this is saying, do this here. Okay, got it. Okay, so, okay. 
I I see what you did there, learn module. I see what you did there. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Okay, so now this should not only pop up 24 inches, have it set to the max because the slider responds to it. And then now if I go over here, this works just fine. That is that is just silly. Okay. Let's see, what we got we got time. We got it's a little bit of time left over here to do a little bit more. Let's see. Reuse components by creating templates. I'm interested in this. Blazor components provide layout and user interface logic for an app. Sometimes you want to create more generic components that can be reused across multiple apps. Understanding the render fragment type. I feel like this might be its own thing. Oh, it seems a little bit much. A template component supplies the layout and logic for one or more fragments. This HTML is rendered using the context provided by the content to template content. A template content component, template component uses a render fragment as its base. So this is what it's doing is it's at child content. Okay. A template is just an ordinary razor component. So ordinary and fine. To use this, the razor page creates a heading component element and specifies the markup to be displayed by the template as the body of the element. This markup will be passed to the child content. That's kind of cool. So you can just create this little thing here. Interesting. Hmm. Slash test page. How does it know to go there? Okay. The name child content is the default name for the render parameter. You can give the parameter anything you want. So this is the child content. You could also call it body content. Interesting. Hmm. Just got bamboozled. There you go. Yes. <laughs> we talk, we, we use that reference all the time around that. It's funny. Oh, so you get multiple render fragments. That's kind of cool. Interesting. A header content and the body content. Oh, wow. Look at that. And there's an H3 up here. That's cool. So, oh, cool. Header content, body content. That's neat. So you're creating these templates and like this is only going to reference this up here. Oh, that's kind of cool. Exactly. Go past the mud hut through the rainbow ring to get to the gold monkey. Boom. Paradise bond. Um, Cool. Understanding generic renders. Okay, cool. So we have data type, blah, 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 uh, blah, 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 doing stuff, doing stuff. Vertical tab container, cascading parameters. Okay, we should probably actually read that. Um, <laughs> let's see. Okay, so understand. By default, the render fragment class acts as a placeholder in the HTML. However, you can use it to render other types of content by using a type parameter when then providing the logic to handle, you might use a for each loop. Whoa. Yeah. So you could pass it content. That makes sense. Cool. So here you can do object list forecast, give it this stuff. Bingo, bango. That's cool. So kind of like item templates. That's what I'm learning. This is basically an item template that you would do. Like if you're doing in XAML, it's kind of interesting. Just notice you indenting blocks of code using your keyboard. How do you do that? Oh, uh, Dino, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that so much. And thanks for being a, 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 a subscriber and member over here. It's amazing, so amazing, so amazing. <laughs> oh, it takes a little bit to cut through. Uh, I just use tab. Just using tab and shift tab. That's all. Just like manually. Tab and shift tab, I just highlight it. Pretty old school. If you're in Visual Studio um, mainline, you can do, that might work, let me see. Uh, if I highlight it all with Control A, then Control KF. Yeah, that's how you would, oh, that's actually better to do. So, so let's say that this is over here and this is all janky and stuff like this. You can Control A, then Control KF, and that will format your document for you. At least in general, that's what it does. Even in VS Code, that's cool to know. So, yeah. 
All right, cool. Let's see. Compose templates. Many web apps make use of nested elements, such as lists within lists, lists within lists. Um, a vertical tab template acts as a container. A tab page template that renders vertical tabs. That makes sense. Cascading value. Ooh. There's tabs, okay. Child content. Note that this, the current instance of the template, is configured as a cascading value that will be passed as a cascading parameter. So it's passing itself down over and over and over again. Okay, because it's creating a bunch of tabs, basically. Cool. We have cascading parameter, so it's passing itself down as a cascading parameter into the children, basically. Cool. Tabs. Tabs. All right, cool. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. What parameter object type should be configured in a shared parameter? Render fragment. We learned all about that. What is the name of a parameter that captures all markup inside of a component without requiring an additional tag? Child content? I think. All right. Did it. All right, let's do this. Um, the template could use improve on how our customers pass orders are displayed on the Blazing Pizza app. The pizza company asked that the My Orders page show more details about their pass one. So let's create the container over here. Let's do that first. Boop. We're going to go into shared and we're going to add a new file. Okay, let's do that. Add new file. Boop. We're going to create a tab container dot razor. Boop. We're going to shove some code in there. Bam. So this is going to be a cascading value of the tabs. Oh, cool. Awesome. All right. The code creates a cascading value of tab pages that goes through them. Cool. Let's add a code block. Bunch of code. Cool. We have a render fragment child content, our current page, a list of items, and adding tabs. All right, cool. And get an active tab on active tab. Create a tabbed page. In shared, let's add a new file. This will be a tab page dot razors we're creating tabs baby i like it boop so this is gonna just be a container child container it's got some stuff update the my order all right so we're gonna update the else clause all right so what we're doing is we're now saying, if there are no orders, you're hit loading. If there are no lower orders, because it's null, no orders. If there are orders, let's go through, let's, um, oh, I just replaced the old code with the new code. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Okay, let's do that. Boop. All right, cool. So now what we're doing is we're saying, oh, interesting. Tab container. Ooh. Oops. File save all, maybe? Control KS. Did I just create a tab container? Hmm. F5? <laughs> I don't know if it's actually going to work or not. Uh, no orders. Order some pizza. Okay, let's order some pizza. Oh, yeah, definitely something didn't work there. Because of why? It should look like that. I feel like it's missing. Did I miss something? At, at using shared? No. Blazing dot shared? Maybe I need to add that in there. I 
think. There's an extra on line three. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, is that, was that because of me? It must have been because of me. Nice, weird. Uh, .NET, .NET build? Come, it doesn't know. Uh, delete. It's here, I swear. Hmm. It's weird that it compiles, though. I would think that it doesn't. It wouldn't know to to do it. Let's place an order, I guess. Oh no. Something has gone. M is an invalid start of the value. Oh no. I think it goes, tries to go to the thing. Did I mess something up? Whoa, Adam here, thank you for the subscription. Uh, I don't know. Did I miss something? I don't know if I missed something. Uh... Well, it's in it's interesting because this found the tab page, right? Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. It says it can't be found. Uh. Well, what is that? Oh, that's the virtual. Uh. I don't know. I am puzzled. I am puzzled. It's interesting if I put it in here, it still doesn't find it. Hmm. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that inside of the uh, imports, it uses the shared, so it should be implicitly in there. Um. 
dot net clean dot net build this should just work Definitely can't find it. I'm lost. I'm lost, people. Huh. I don't know. I do not know. I feel like it... Well, it's funny because it should... Hmm. Is there a corresponding tag at the end? Oh, good question. Oh, you think that's a problem? Yeah, right here. Close all and then open my orders again. Yeah, I just can't find it. Because if I do that, right, it's right there. I can't, it's like I can't find it for some reason. Let's see, unenha un unexpected handle. Oh, I wonder if this get from JSON orders, base URL orders, internal server does not indicate success. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense because here this is going to call the orders URL. Hmm. Which is here. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. says an error has occurred it's like somewhere in the sequel light maybe let's try this out let's delete all of this i guess let's try it again with just an f5 i feel like it Something went awry. I don't know. Okay. Maybe my database was corrupt or something like that. I don't know. Weird. Um, I don't know. Very strange. My database must have been corrupted by something then. Because now this is working. Now, oh, uh, weird. Huh. Huh. I'm, I'm puzzled. I don't know. I just deleted the database because the database was being weird. But again, I'm in a weird state, maybe. So I don't know. But now we have all the things. OK, cool. I don't know. I just did it. And there's a track button. Weird. I don't know what I did. But it's kind of fascinating. <laughs> trying to create a pull request. It's fascinating because if I go into the my orders page, they still show the squigglies. Maybe that's just a razor component issue thing. I don't know. Does the configure pizza dialog go somewhere else? I don't know. Oh, I don't. I think that's called manually. That's interesting. I'll have to ask Jeff about that. Oh, now it's gone. Nope, nope, it's back. That must be a VS Code weird thingy maybe i don't know that's strange okay interesting oh let's finish this puppy i'm ready we did it that's the old one okay and i stopped debugging so that makes sense 
All right. All right. Okay. All right. I'm in. Okay. So we learned today. <laughs> we learned today how to call JavaScript libraries from C Sharp and Blazor, how to call C Sharp from JavaScript, how to componentize some of our different lifecycle events, and to create templated controls so we could create those tabbed pizzas, which were nice. Interesting. All right, cool. I'm going to un unlock my achievement um, and we're good to go. I'll do, how are we doing over here? Great and submit. Cool. All right. Whew. That was a journey. Oh my gosh. Well, thanks everyone for hanging out uh, for the last two <laughs> hours. Um, I have some pull requests to be doing to this repo. That is for sure. And then of course, figure out where that code is at. Where's the beginner code? Oh my goodness. It's close. I'm glad that we had the code from two weeks ago. Um, there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is build reusable components. And I believe it's like packaging them up into a NuGet package, which is pretty cool. So I'm excited about that um, in general. So that is that is crazy. But it's good to know that those squiggles were meant to be there. <laughs> Elliot says, I stopped by just in time. You can rewind all the way back, Elliot, if you want to as well. But thanks for just stopping by. I appreciate it. Oh, my goodness. Um, but, you know, thank you so much for the the super chat. Um, thanks for the new memberships as well, which is awesome. Um, I, had, I had fun. I had fun. I like doing these like streams, fixing up some of these learn modules, learn a bunch uh, as well. I think I now kind of understand some of the templates stuff. It's like item templates and separate files. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, I'll be back next week, next Friday. I'm going to be trying to post the, um, the upcoming streams um, Thursday night. So that way, if you're subscribed to the channel, you don't get inundated on it, but it'll be there. Boom. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have um, on Tuesday, I have a .NET Maui preview 12. Onimus, thank you so much for the subscription. On Tuesday, I have um, .NET Maui preview 12 video coming out. And then uh, I'm going to do a short on Thursday of putting a Doge in your Windows terminal. Um, in under 60 seconds. So that should be super cool as well. Um, if anyone wants any kind of like different type of content, I had a whole um, on the community tab on my YouTube page. I had a survey of what y'all want to see. Um, so if you go to my channel and tap on community right here, I'll put it in the chat. There you go. Um, you'll see a little bit further down, we had like a bunch of engagement, like 800 people voted what type of content you want to see me uh, ha do on the stream. So more people were interested in me working on Don and Maui and uh, app clones, um, building those out like I did for the Peloton app a while back. A lot of people are interested in Don and Maui plus Blazor. A lot of people less interested about just Blazor though, which is also fun fascinating. But we have one more Blazor episode, which should be relatively short and sweet. Um, and then we're going to do a members only there. I'd like to see someone implement Google Analytics and Maui for iOS. You should be able to just use the, I did it a long time ago. I usually use App Center Analytics, but you should be able to put it, it in there. Just call it a code. Should be some samples on the GitHub repo though, Elliot. There. All right, I got to run off to some meetings. Thanks everyone for hanging out. I had a blast. Honestly, just answering everyone's questions for the first like 30 minutes were super duper fun. And we got through this thing, which is super exciting. So I hope everyone has a great weekend. Um, I'm not there quite yet. I got a bunch of work left to do. Uh, but if you're around today in about four hours, head over to the Visual Studio YouTube and I'll be hanging out with Mads as he's built in some like a in-app review Visual Studio extension or something like that. It seems pretty cool. So thanks everyone for hanging out. Adrian uh, as well for the new sub uh, membership. Aiden for help moderating and software as well. Have a good one. We'll check y'all next week. Bye-bye.